want to say good morning and happy Sunday to each and every one of you. Uh, this is Tim Anders. I am pastor of Christian Home Baptist Church. And uh, we are located at 1926 Fox Ridge Road, spot of North Carolina. Um, it snowed this morning and we were planning on having church, but uh, uh, saw some reports about some snow covered roads and also um, not knowing the winds and the ifs on the weather. Um, so we uh, unfortunately have uh, decided not to have services out at the church this day, but uh, did want to send you out a word and remind you that God loves you and that he is all we need and he will take care of us. He's our refuge. He's our strength. And the good Lord loves each and every one of us. And just want to send forth praise to him. He's he's worthy to be praised and thankful for the Lord. Thankful for all he does. And I want to thank you individually, uh, the ones that are going to watch this. And um, appreciate it. If you ever got any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. And uh, got any thoughts or wonderments or uh, whatever as far as uh, the word or what does it mean to be a Christian or if there's anything uh, you think I could help with or if you got any questions, please let me know. Be glad to uh, answer, reach out to you and uh, let's all point our way to Jesus and follow him for he is worthy and we love and worship the Lord. So yeah, I hope you get something out of sermon this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, Basically, the title of the sermon is Let Us Choose to Love. Let Us Choose to Love. And uh, going to be in 1 John 4. Uh, going to be in the Gospel of John. And also going to be in Romans this morning. And uh, if we look at 1 John 4, 14 through 21, um, it states there, 1 John 4, 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Hear that. That 16th verse. Read that again. And we have known and believed that the love of God. I'll read that again. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. That's the thing. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So that's a connection. We need that connection in this life and this world. It says in the 17th verse, it says, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. And that's the reason why title in this, this, uh, this sermon here, putting the title on it here we're going to choose to love and this is something i know within myself and i know within others and i know with the people that i interact with in this life whether it be the church family work family uh whether it be uh, actual uh relationships my friends uh people i know uh people that i gather with certain meetings we all a-l-l -L, me too we all have a choice we can choose to love we can choose it 
And that's a choice. And the thing I like about Christianity, and anybody's ever talked to me about Christianity, that's one thing I do like about it. It is a choice. I had no God come drag me down to an altar, put my face down on the floor. Nothing like that ever happened. You know, this was a decision, I a free will decision that I make, and it's a free will decision that you can make as well. To choose to love, it's a free will decision to choose salvation. It's a free will decision to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And to me, that's something that I like and I appreciate it because it's my responsibility at that point. You see, I'm not trusting or looking at anybody else. You see, my relationship with God is in my hands. It's what I do. Now, he made the way. He gets all the praise. But he's telling everybody, each and every one, it is a personal decision. And that's why I love being a Christian. It says here, there is no, the 18th verse, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, you know, we can go a lot of ways with this verse. But I was talking to someone just this week, recently, about this life and the cares of this life and how that people are just wrapped up in the day in, day out. And they get consumed, whether it be the politics or the economy or the, the, the virus issue or, or just daily life. You know, we get wrapped up in the things that we have in our life, in our world. And I know within myself, the times I get rattled, the times I have anxiety, the times I fear, the times that those things overcome me. I know I'm looking more to those issues and those scenarios than I am looking at the Spirit of God, looking at His Word, trusting in Him, okay? I'm not saying I don't have anxieties or fears or worries or any of that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is with the Word, with His Spirit, with His teachings, with all that God is, I can take those things and I can apply it. And that's another thing I like about Christianity. And that's another thing I like about the Word of God. You can apply these things to your daily life. And it works. I've seen it work time and time again. I pray about these issues. I ask God. I seek. I search the Bible. I I, I go to my, my good Christian brothers and sisters. I ask for prayer. I ask for help. I ask for their opinion and advice on things. How do you see this? What's your opinion on this? How do you feel about this issue? And I seek and, and see, I try to apply the teachings of Christ to my life and to my scenarios. And this is a perfect example. If we have love, love can cast out fear. Hear what it says, cast out. You have to understand there has to be an acceptance and an understanding that fear is there. Okay. Some people walk around like, I ain't afraid of anything. Hey, that's that's your world you're living in, it, and I understand. But you have to understand, accept, and realize if there's fear in your life, you have to understand that that fear is real. And then from that point, here comes the casting out whether it's a physical, an emotional, or what, you know, whatever it is, a relationship, uh, it could be your work, it could be, you know, the things, the goals you've got in your life, maybe they've not, maybe things haven't happened the way you'd like or whatever. Some of these things can bring on fear. You have to accept that, okay? Hey, there's something here that's trying to overwhelm me. Now that I've accepted the fact that this fear is real and that this fear exists, now I can apply the spirit, the word. I can apply these things that God has gifted to me and I can cast that 
thing out. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, let me give you an example, a little simple example. At my house, there's a basement. All right. And there's only one door and two windows. All right. That's the only way you can get in and out of this basement. All right. There's two, there's two windows and there's a door. There's no steps. There's no upstairs, downstairs kind of thing. There's an indoor and outdoor. The indoor and outdoor is the same, the same place. All right. And there's two windows. All right. And I remember as a kid, all right, if you kept that door open, we had a ton of cats around this place. That cat, there are going to be cats in the basement. All right. If you keep that door open, Cats gonna get in the basement. We didn't want cats in the basement because they gonna tear up stuff. All right, that's just you say you know you can be happy about me or not, whatever. But we you know we had to keep an eyeball, and it's not just our cat. They be neighbor. They had dogs around the neighborhood. I mean, there's animals all over the place. Okay, if the if the cats and the dogs and whomever's get in, you gonna have to cast them things out if you don't want them in your basement anymore. You see what I'm saying? You will have to deal with that situation, all right? So when fear comes into your life, accept the fear. Accept it. It's there. It's real. And then once you accept it, you'll be like, okay, now we're going to deal with it. We got too many people not willing to deal with stuff anymore. We got too many people, they just, they are curling up, they're dwelling up, they they they're, they got their tents, they're stay. They, I won't, this is where I'm going to stay. All right, this is where my life is going to physically be until I die. And they, they mark these moments. Now, I'm not making fun, and I'm not making light of these situations. But I'm telling you that you can overcome these things that I could overcome. I got fears too. Trust me, I got fears. But you apply the Word of God, you apply the Spirit, you apply His love, and you go forth. That don't mean you don't need help. That don't that don't mean you might not you might need a friend or two, you might need hey you might need to go talk to someone, I get that, you may need hey you know there's counselors there's preachers there's good friends, there's there's family, whoever you putting your trust in okay, people need people I get that, I'm not saying that you gotta go at it alone. You know Adam needed Eve, all right. Jesus had the disciples. Jesus can do all things by himself, but he still had the disciples, all right? Now, a lot of that was for the teaching and for the ministration of the word and it being spread out and all those things, and that's how he sought to do these things. But the disciples were still there, okay? They ministered unto Jesus, and Jesus ministered unto them. That's a whole different sermon, but Jesus is the head. He is the end-all, be-all. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know... Raise up the disciples. Don't hear that part. But people need people, okay? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Cast these things out, all right? Harping on this a little bit, but I just felt like that needed to be said. When you get there, it casts out fear, all right? You say, I can't do it by myself. Get some help. I'm praying. That's good. Keep praying. I'm reading. Keep reading. Keep going out. Get after it. Keep at it. He will help us. I love this scripture so much because it goes on the 19th verse. We love him because he loved us. We love him because he loved us. Now, I was born in 1970. And just to do the quick math, all right, I'm 51. I will be 52 later on in the month of February, all right? Jesus Christ completed his work over 2,000 years ago. And even way before that, all the centuries before that, all right, God himself, he loved us. He created this world. He created the words and the promises. He created the prophecies, all right? He loved us. This thing's been going on way longer before I even showed up. It tells me it's not about me. And it also tells me that love was here when I arrived because he loved us first. Okay? So, even though we're born into sin, there's still love there. 
And that love for us is Jesus, his word, his sacrifice, the atonement, all those things. Salvation is at hand. It's for you and I. Praise the Lord. Thankful for that. Very thankful for that. He loved us first. Praise God. And it tells us here that we need to love our brother. It says the 21st verse there, 1 John 4, 21, And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. I'm telling you, we got to love one another. Got to pray for those. Got to help. Got to be a light. Don't mean we always go get along. Don't mean we always go understand each other. Don't mean we go hang out all the time. All right? Still got to love one another. Got to help. Got to be willing. Shine the light. Pour them to Jesus. Be humble. Take the high road. You say, Tim, I don't know how. Keep praying. Keep seeking. Keep reading the word. Ask God for help. Come talk to me. I'll probably wind up come talking to you as well. All right? There's a handful of folks. Oh, my goodness. I call them, oh, my goodness, people. Because when they show up, it's like, oh, my goodness. Here they is. All right? Still got to love them. That's scripture. All right? So let's help each other. Let's look at John 15 this morning. John 15, 9 through 14. John 15, the gospel of John, the 15th chapter, the 9th verse. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now I've ministered on this a month or two back. And the Spirit gave me a beautiful thought, the wonderful Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. I was reading the Scripture, and I was looking at that 13th verse, John 15, 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And I know we can take that literally. We can I thank God for the military people. I thank God for law enforcement folks. I thank God for those that have protected not only this land and this nation, but, but their families. People have put their, literally put their life on the line to protect others. That's a blessing. Jesus Christ, the greatest example, laid down his life for all. What a beautiful example. But, I got to studying on these things and I got to thinking about the that a man laid down his life for his friends. And I got to thinking about, to me, that would also include the following. Whenever I take from my schedule and my routine and I reach out to someone else, to try to fulfill their need. And I know there's a lot of good brothers and good sisters in Christ. They take time from their personal life. They lay down their goals, their wants, their needs, and they decide to help someone else out. And see, you are demonstrating a greater love in those times, you see, when you say, I'm going to put aside what I'm going to do to help others, to be a light, to point people to Jesus, to be that, that bridge in between the gaps of their needs, 
That could be fixing a sandwich. That could be calling someone. That could be hugging a neck. That could be praying for someone. You know, instead of me going out shopping, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to pay someone's light bill or I'm going to make sure this, this widow woman, she got milk in her fridge. Or I'm going to make sure those kids got some clothes, uh, those neighbor's kids. You see what I'm saying? You lay down your life, your goals, your wants to fulfill someone else, to help them, to lift them up, to encourage them. There's a, you know, over the last decade or two, you, you, you hear that term, pay it forward. You know, you be in the, um, you be in the fast food lane and you buy the person's uh, meal behind you, stuff like that. Pick up a friend's tab or a stranger's tab at a restaurant or or maybe, you know, you go, uh, you know, someone who's under the weather or maybe they on vacation and you go over and mow their lawn, uh, make sure their mailbox is emptied out and you gather in their mail and stuff like that. You pay it forward. That's a that's a that's a phrase, a very familiar phrase. You know, when you lay down your life, when you say, I'm going to prefer my brother, and my sister, I'm going to prefer my neighbor, I'm going to prefer those folks. And even though that a lot of times I know I personally am not going to get anything back, there's a joy in giving. And there's a joy in knowing that in a much lesser way, you, you are being just what Christ did. Christ gave his all, you see. And in that aspect, you're given a part of yourself, your life, your resources, your time, your emotions, your wherewithal. You're reaching out to others, you see. You're taking time. You're laying down your life so others can have. That's a great love. That's a great love. We've lost a lot of sense of community in our world because people are consumed with their own lives, their own job, their own goals, their own wants, and their own needs. And there's a whole lot less helping your brother and sister. We need to get back to helping one another. We need to get back to hugging necks and shaking hands and patting backs. And We need to get back to be an, our brother's keeper and, and helping each other out and show and demonstrate the love of God. I really like that verse. It's like in that 11th verse, John 15, 11, it says, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. There is a joy. There is a hope. There is a sense of fulfillment. There is, there's something that comes alive when you give to someone, when you love someone, when you help someone, there's there's this fulfillment that shows up. And it's like, yeah. And that fulfillment, that's that joy wanting to remain in you so that you can go out and share the love of the Lord, that you can go out and be that good example, that shining light that he wants us to be. Got two more verses for you this morning. Romans 12, 9 and 10. Romans 12, 9 and 10. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And I got to looking up, I got to looking up this word, the simulation. The simulation, um, one term for it is to be genuine. All right? Genuine. My mama used to call it genuine. Love my mama. Miss mama. It says, the simulation is to be genuine. Let us love honestly with real feelings and emotion. It says, let us love. All right, let us love. 
honestly. Let us love with real emotion. Don't be picking and choosing. Let us be good to all. A-L-L. -L. Because Christ was good to all, is good to all, still is good to all, will continue to be good to all. His Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Abhor that which is evil. Get rid of the evil. Cleave to that which is good. Cleave. That means hang on like your white knuckle hanging on. All right? Get them knuckles all white because you got such a good grip on it. You ain't nothing going to separate you. Cleave to that which is good. It continues on. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. That is something I know I can work on right there. I like lists in the Bible, like the Beatitudes and, and, and you got the whole armor of God. And you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. There's a huge check. There's all these checklists, Ten Commandments, checklist, all these checklists. There's tons of checklists in the Bible telling us what we need. Romans 12 is a big checklist. There's all kinds of things in there. Boom, do this, do this, here, do that, check off this, boom, 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 boom. This is a great one. Be kindly affectionate with one another. Oh, my. Mm. Help us, Lord. Help me, Lord. With brotherly love. In honor, prefer one another. Oh, wow. What a wonderful life and world we would have if we would look out for one another. How much better would the roads be on the highway? Now, anybody know me personally, all right? I could probably spend 10, 15 minutes a day talking about the roads and talking about traffic. I mean, that just that's just the way it is with me. Some people talk about the weather. Some people talk about sports. Some people, I can talk to you about, oh, you, you should have seen what I've seen today, all right? I, I I work about two miles, two to three miles away from the house, about two miles, whatever. And I, I see more on, I see people not doing stop signs. I see people cutting people off. I see I, all kinds of stuff, you know? And then I look in the mirror, it's like, are you one of them? You know? And I try not to be, I try not to be. And I, and I don't think I am most days. I can't say I'm perfect most days, but I can talk about, I can talk about the traffic. Oh, my goodness. I could talk about that. And if I would think to myself, you know, if everybody, when we got in the car, all right, if we were kindly affectionate to one another and prefer one another, we'd, we'd, we'd drive a whole lot better. We would. We would. And not only would we drive a whole lot better, we'd work a whole lot better. You know, family reunions. Oh, my, what a gracious time that would be. Church life. Oh, my goodness. You ever seen people bickering in church? Now, I can't talk about my church family because they probably be like, you should be talking about that. But I'll tell you what, I've seen some church families and I'll be like, oh my goodness. I just wait for Jesus to come off a cloud with a switch and take us all to the woodshed. I really did. And I'm like, oh my. So we got to prefer one another, folks. We got to be kindly affectionate with one another and brotherly love. And you know why? Because we're being watched. We're being looked at. We got a witness, all right? So let our witness be good, all right? So let's be genuine, all right? We need to be genuine. We need to love honestly. We need to love with real emotion. We need to be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Now, now remember the title of the sermon, Let Us Choose the Love. These are choices. We choose to be genuine. We choose to chase out evil. We choose to cleave to that which is good. We choose to be kindly affectionate one to another. Man, there's some people I see, oh man, I can't do enough for because I love them to death. I think they're awesome. They just light up my world. There's some people I'm like, I'm going to get in the car and drive away before they even see me. All right? 
I need to work on this. Right? That don't mean that you don't, you know, you got to make good decisions. There's people out there that will take advantage. There's people out there, you know, they'll, they'll take you down a bad road. I understand. There's times you've been hurt. I know some folks, abusive relationships. I know some folks in some serious bad situations family-wise. You got to have borders. You got to have hedges. You got to have distance. I get that. We can still pray. Okay? And we can pray for everybody involved. That includes ourselves. All right? I'm not saying you's wrong. I'm saying let the Lord help us do the right thing. I feel 100% that, yeah, sometimes you need to keep distance. Sometimes you don't need to be around certain people. Yes. Yes. 100%. Okay? But if your feelings and your emotions about that scenario is keeping you from serving God and keeping you being all you can be with God, that's where you need to go to the Lord. Like, Lord, help me. Okay? Um, I've asked the Lord to help me with... Uh, situations in the past lord i'm angry i'm just angry at this person or lord i don't want to talk to this person or lord uh this person hurt my feelings and i'm like i just don't know how to deal and handle this help me lord and he has helped and he will continue to help because he's the creator and that's one thing i like to always talk about is that always go back to the creator the creator's the one to take care of these things. He's the one who made us. He'll take care of these things and he'll help us. So, listen, I want to remind you to choose to love. I hope you got something out of the sermon this morning. I hope that that'll bless your heart. And I hope you decide to choose love. Be good. Cleave to the good. Abhor the evil. Cast out the fear. Walk in the power and in the encouragement and in the light and in the love and hope and mercy and grace that is Jesus Christ, his wonderful spirit, our Holy Father. Praise God, all three in one. We're blessed this morning. So listen, I hope you got something out of this. And again, my name is Tim Anders, pastor of Christian Home Baptist Church out there on 1926 Fox Ridge Road, Sparta, North Carolina. We normally have services 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10. Uh, got worship service again at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And also Sunday night, we normally have a singing and preaching, kind of a, just a good time of worship at 6 o'clock on Sundays. That's when we're meeting right now, praise the Lord. Hoping to have a revival coming up in May. We're making plans on that. And also uh, got some other plans, hoping to get some kids involved and some doing stuff and and that would probably be on a Sunday night as well. But uh, if you got any questions, uh, please reach out to me. We also got a Facebook, and uh, this this link is coming off of a YouTube. We do have a YouTube page. And uh, feel free to look back. We've got all our sermons. We've got some of the Sunday night singings as well, and uh, some of the performers and the wonderful people coming out, um, praising God, worshiping the Lord. So um, please. Take time, view it, like it, subscribe to it. And like I said, if, uh, if we can do anything for you, if I can do anything for you, please reach out. Want to say God bless. Want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Valentine's coming up tomorrow. And again, I uh, just uh, thank and praise the Lord above for giving me this time, this opportunity. Lord, I ask the Lord to bless everyone watching this. Lord God, touch lives, Lord. And help us, Lord, to choose love. We give you praise and we love you, Lord. In thy name, Jesus. Amen. Again, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you appreciate it. Hope you got something out of the message. It's Tim Anders again. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.